These are my top tips and tricks that you may not know. Whether you're just starting out or a long-term player of 7 days, I bet you'll learn something new by the end of this video, so stick around until the end. And if you want to stay updated on all things 7 days and survival gaming, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Completing your tutorial quests will reward you with perk points that you can assign immediately and will influence the types of loots and magazines you'll begin to find early on, so pick these very carefully. One of the items you start the game with is a land claim block, which once placed designates an area around it as your claim. Once an area is claimed, enemies will not spawn inside it and quests won't reset the area within it. Bedrolls can also act as smaller scale land claim blocks, but also have the added benefit of being respawn points with the option to spawn on or near when respawning, and also provide both an on-screen HUD marker as well as a marker on your map. Once you've completed the basic tutorial missions, you'll get a useful on-screen marker showing you the distance and direction of the nearest trader location. You can equip certain wearable items like the cigar to your character to increase your bartering skills. The cigar increases your bartering skill by 10% with an added bonus of plus one to your strength as well. The cigar can be found while looting but can also be crafted or bought from traders. To craft a cigar, you'll need 250 plant fibers, one paper and one testosterone extract, as well as having found a copy of Urban Combat Volume 2 magazine to unlock the schematic. It can be crafted in your crafting menu without the need for any workstations and will also apply a 10% increase to bartering when equipped to the face of your character. Sugar butts are a consumable candy that can also increase your bartering skill by 10%, though as this is usually the case with consumables, this effect only lasts for a limited amount of time. Sugar butts have a duration of 6 minutes, which should be plenty of time to make the trades you need to make before it wears off. Just make sure you don't lose track of your effect duration while browsing a trader's wares. Sugar butts will also grant you a plus five to food as well. Grandpa's Awesome Sauce is a drinkable item that gives you a massive 20% buff to bartering as well, but only lasts for a duration of three minutes in comparison to Sugar Butts 6, though crafting Grandpa's Awesome Sauce takes considerable investment into the food skill. You'll need to find and read 60 cooking magazines to unlock the fourth tier in food and gain access to the ability to craft in Grandpa's Awesome Sauce. From there, you'll need 50 Duke tokens, 5 jars of honey, 5 mushrooms, 10 gas canisters, and 1 ear of super corn to craft it at a campfire using a cooking pot. There's also pumpkin cheesecake, which will increase your buying power from traders by 5% for a duration of 5 minutes. Though pumpkin cheesecake may be weaker than the previously mentioned bartering buff items, it does only need 11 cooking magazines to unlock it at tier 2 in the food skill. Additionally, it's much easier and cheaper to craft, requiring only one pumpkin, one egg, one cornmeal, one animal fat, and one beer at a campfire with a cooking pot. When selling to a trader, you'll also want to maximize the trade-in value of weapons and armor by repairing them to full durability too, as this will command a higher value than an item that's seen some wear and tear. You can also attach any old or unwanted mods to these items as well, to really buff up the returns on selling these items to traders. Combining this method with some of the previously mentioned bartering buff items is a surefire way to clean out the traders of their precious dukes and start building a small fortune of your own. The better bartering skill is a great way to increase your yields when conducting business with traders too, increasing the value of your trades in increments of 5% per tier up to a total of 25%. This in combination with the Daring Adventurer skill, which grants up to 20% more dupes for completion of quests, can see you swimming in cash in no time. All of these effects are stackable too, so you can potentially see an overall total increase in bartering of 70%, with an additional 5% from the pumpkin cheesecake for buying. So utilize them all if you want to maximize the value of your trade-in items or minimize the cost of your purchases. Magazines are more important than ever now, and actively dictate what schematics you can unlock and what items you can craft. You can usually find magazines inside mailboxes, newspaper stands, and most reliably at POIs like Cracker Book bookstores. You can identify if you've already read a magazine by the icon that appears in the top corner of the magazine in your inventory. If it's been read, it'll display an open book, and if it hasn't, it'll display a closed book. 
Magazines can be sold to traders if they've already been read for some easy jukes and will provide roughly double the amount of XP as they would if they were re-read, as well as the added bonus of some extra cash. When undertaking a quest, you can search the location for magazines and loot before activating the quest rally marker, which once selected, resets the entire POI and repopulates it, allowing you to loot it all over again. You can scrap each magazine for a total of three paper, which can be used for crafting certain types of weapons and ammo, like sticks of dynamite, which need 10 pieces of paper to craft. Which, considering the sale price of magazines and the buy price of dynamite, isn't as crazy as it sounds. Thirst is a tricky thing to manage, but there are plenty of ways to do this with the in-game drinkable items and handy headgear mod attachments like the Water Purifier headgear mod. Once equipped to a suitable piece of headgear, you can drink from any body of water with an empty hand by pressing the E key and bypassing the dysentery buff effect altogether. With the Dew Collector, you're able to produce 2-4 to four water every 12 hours, per dew collector constructed. These dew collectors will passively produce activity when in use, increasing your heat map, but not when they are either full or not collecting water at all. Drinkable items can be looted, crafted or bought from traders and vending machines, with each one providing a different set of buffs to both stamina and water for your player character. Using a bucket and a one by one hole, you can create an infinite water source which couples with the water purifier headgear mods will solve any issues with drinkable water for the foreseeable future. The dew collector can be placed both inside and underground as long as it has a total of five block spaces above it, protecting it from zombie hordes and projectile attacks brought on by the increase of your heat map. With the added ability to shoot through blocks in Alpha 21 comes new opportunities for improvised defences and improved horde bases. You can now shoot through certain types of railing blocks which prevent zombies from entering key areas as well as collecting loot bags or repairing structures on the other side of them. You can place down any type of block in a pinch to create some space between you and approaching enemies too especially within door frames, allowing yourself the time to bring unruly situations under control. To gain access to hard to reach areas, you can create wood frame towers bypassing interiors of POIs to get to the best loot usually found on the rooftops of these locations. When progressing through quests, you'll be offered a special quest reward after completing a set of tiered quests. For completing the first tier of quests, you'll be offered the bicycle, which only requires seven quests to be completed in this tier, granting you a pre-crafted bike to help traverse the world without the need for learning, crafting and looting the means to do it yourself. Stealth can be a powerful skill to specialise in, with sneak attacking giving you an initial 3.5 times damage buff. Crouching will reduce the amount of noise your character creates, as well as the chance of detection by zombies. With the Urban Combat Volume 3 magazine, you can walk over abandoned trash noisemakers without alerting nearby zombies or enemies. And with Urban Combat 5, you'll be able to walk over landmines without triggering them at all. Light levels will also reduce your stealth as you'll be easier to detect. This could be caused by any light source, from natural light to torches and flashlights. Using the night vision goggles, you can really reduce the amount of light you need to explore darker areas and POIs, as these don't emit light like torches, flashlights or flaming mods. You can place custom map markers in your map screen by pressing the M key to bring up your map, and you can share these markers with players on your team or with everyone on a server. You can also select a custom map marker icon, as well as typing out your own custom marker name. Using the same method, you can also create a handy to-do list by placing a selection of markers and bullet pointing the tasks you need to complete during the in-game day. Choosing where to establish your base can depend on the type of biome you want to settle in and the unique differences each biome possesses. The game stage of each biome affects its difficulty, with the pine forest being the easiest, followed by the desert, then snow and finally the wasteland. Each biome increases your game stage in increments of 0.5 for the game stage multiplier, starting at 1 for Pine Forest and ending with 2.5 times in the Wasteland, and a biome bonus increase of plus 10 per biome beginning with 0 in the Pine Forest and ending with plus 30 in the Wasteland, making the loot in more difficult biomes of higher quality 
but also increasing the difficulty of enemies right along with it. Some biomes have resource types unique to them, like shale spawning only in the desert biome and coal not appearing naturally in the desert biome at all. Some enemy types are much more common in specific biomes too, like direwolves and lumberjacks in the snow biome, vultures and coyotes in the desert biome, and whites in the wasteland. Brass is an important component in creating ammo, and finding it is easier than you'd think. Scrapping things like brass radiators, doorknobs, candlesticks, trophies, and a host of other items will net you some easy brass. But to increase your yield, smelt brass items into raw brass in the forge. Even duke tokens can be scrapped and smelted into brass if you're in a desperate situation. You can easily identify ore nodes by checking your map and spotting coloured dots that will appear on the landscape. Lead is blue, iron is brown, coal is black, and nitrate is white. Lead is another important resource used in crafting and can easily be found by scrapping car batteries, netting you 120 lead. Wrenches can be used to dismantle a number of electrical, mechanical and metal objects in the world and harvests much more resources in a shorter amount of time compared to breaking them down. If you're struggling to find a wrench, the best place to look is in sinks, toolboxes and working stiff supply crates. Vehicles can take a lot more damage since A21 dropped, so repairing them is something you'll need to keep in mind. It's a good idea to keep a repair kit in the vehicle's inventory, so you've always got a way to repair vehicles if they've taken too much damage. Leveling up in the Grease Monkey skill can also reduce the amount of repair kits you need to repair your vehicle back to its maximum durability, and the effectiveness of each repair kit used. With each tier of the Grease Monkey skill, your repair kits will gain an additional 10% effectiveness up to a maximum of 50%, reducing the number of repair kits needed overall. Trader Bob is the specialist for mechanical equipment, and so will have the most relevant inventory to the construction of vehicles and vehicle parts. You can maximise the amount of feathers you can harvest from birds nests by first damaging them until their durability is low then searching them for feathers contained inside. Using the shift key and left clicking will move items from your backpack, toolbar or storage containers instantly. Pressing the F7 key will remove the heads up display and pressing it a second time will remove the crosshair as well. On the third press, the HUD will be restored to its normal state. Hitting the F5 key will activate a third person perspective, allowing you to play in third person instead of first when debug menu is active. You're able to share your location with friends at all times by inviting them to your team in the menu, as well as share your custom map markers. POIs will now display their difficulty tier level in the name that appears in the top right of the screen when approaching them, allowing you to decide if you're ready to tackle them or not. Subscribing to Vultralux, you can keep up to date with all things 7 Days to Die, including useful tips and tricks, as well as the latest news on upcoming alphas and content releases. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and share your top tips in the comments below. And why not check out one of my other videos on screen now?